So um, the last one is sort of a bonus metric, a bonus use case. And the reason I, uh, it's a bit of a bonus and kind of interesting because what I'm finding, the people that are in the room creating these standards aren't necessarily the people that adopt them, even in the companies you work for. <laughs> so it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a hard dynamic, but it makes sense in a way because I think what you're doing as a st contributing these standards is you're taking all the knowledge that you have and vetting it with other folks that are in the room, and then you create the standard. And, and we're all adopting. I mean, even the people that were in the room creating the standards for years are still in adoption mode. And now that you know, I was in pre-sales, all these experiences that I, I shared with you were kind of on that customer-facing sort of role that I had, just applying and using IT for IT. The role that I have now, being in R&D, is to help shape the HPE portfolio to adopt and apply the same thinking to the products and services that we sell. So um, we've gone through a process of evaluating our portfolio. So this is the latest diagram, and the, uh, for, in this case, strategy portfolio level two. And what we've done is we've actually mapped our portfolio to it to see, you know, functionally, what is our coverage? If we don't have coverage, do, is there a third party that can cover the space? So when I go back at, to my customers going forward, I don't have to start from scratch. I have a reference implementation and a diagram that I can follow to say, you know, my, my logic is very simple. <laughs> you know, uh, it, the sales guys that are out there talking HP, if they want to sell things, they, they've got to talk in, IT, in, HP, in an IT language. And, and IT for IT gives them that context, that language. And what, what we're able to do now is communicate the products that we're selling in, a, in an IT language, an IT language that you understand. And so uh, some areas we don't have products. We have to use third parties. We don't do everything. We'd like to think we do, but nobody does. And then anybody read, read the news and the rumors and see you know, some of our last couple of years? We're getting smaller. <laughs> so we're gonna be doing less anyway. So we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna have to figure out you know, what is our core competency, where do we focus, and where, where, is, uh, uh, where, where do we have and maintain our products and services, and where do we actually partner and use third parties. So this, for us, is kind of an, a, a really a key step for some of the things that we're doing and how we engage our customers going forward. Um, the same thing down for, is done here for requirements to deploy, so we've got our picture here. And um, interesting story, I want to stop on this one. This is request of a fill. If you're not familiar with the standard, it won't take long. You've got books in the room. Um, this is our request of fulfill pro, uh, value stream and how we've mapped it. Uh, the neat story here, our own adoption story, there's a, there's a product on here called Propel. This didn't exist, what, three years ago. It wasn't in our software portfolio. When we were going through this process of creating IT for IT and seeing how this knowledge came together, and what needs to happen in IT shops to be successful, we had a little bit of head start by, by having this consortium and then uh, before it became a true standard. Uh, and we ended up saying, well, there's a product that we, our services folks had created. Let's bring that over and we, we basically hardened it as a deployable product and we named it, you know, it was the same name, Propel, just a different use case. Um, and it covers these boxes, right, at a very high level. So we were able to kind of look inside and find out, you know, what do we do, what do we not do? Is there an opportunity to, to cover some of these functions because the, the market needs it? Um, you'll also see one that's not covered called usage. Um, you can guess, I don't have to communicate where we might be investing, right? You might know where we're gonna, you know, we're gonna be investing by looking at a view like this. Um, and uh, so anyways, that, that's our uh, high level internal story. We're still going through that process of implementing some level of governance, some level of analysis, some level of vetting, you know, making sure our leadership is making the right decisions to kind of map what we do to what you do <laughs> as an IT shop. It's, it's that simple. Make sense? Um, okay, there's the, my pop-up. Forgot I had put that in there. So Propel, yeah, new product for IT, fun IT functions. Uh, and I'm just gonna zip through there. I don't, I'm not here to talk about our software, just know that it's mapped. We know what the heck we look like against this. Um, and the, this is how I present my use cases to customers today. When I go to talk to people, my job, I don't, I don't sell them software. I'm not, a, I'm not a great sales, I can't sell anything. But I can architect stuff and I can use these great 
assets, these IT for IT, to kind of talk to customers about what they do and don't, don't do, and uh, do these kinds of rationalization and transformation exercises. Uh, functional maturity, very similar to that engineering company I talked about. Uh, and from there, because you have a set of dependencies, you know what you need to do first, second, third, right? So you can, the roadmap planning process is natural, it just emerges. You, you know where your biggest issues are and then you know where your root cause issues are. And then last but not least is this new IT operating model. I think that's really kind of exciting. That's the part that I think is very transformative. It's the lack of that deliver value stream that has caused many businesses to source their own services in the market because we haven't paid attention to how they like the services, how they don't like the services, what services are commoditized that need to be in the catalog for everybody to get to. We just don't pay attention to that. We're not a storefront like Amazon, but that's the experience people want. People in t inside our organizations, right, they want an Amazon experience when they're engaging with IT. And we don't give it to them today. So they're gonna go find it. So IT, the, the IT operating model cha changes are, are actually pretty profound, and I think that's gonna be where most of the, uh, I think, value is. Other things are valuable too, a bit more tactical, but uh, an operating model is, is, pro is, I would say, the biggest opportunity. Um, and so, yeah, here, here's a mapping to some of those uh, assets and some of those things that I talk about. 